Hello there. Today I want to take a look at a South Australian Shiraz. This is Stone Horse from a producer called Kessler. This is from vineyards in the Clare Valley and it's the 2021 vintage. Now Kessler, wonderful historic vineyards in the Barossa Valley, something of, a, of a, an institution really in South Australia. The original Kessler family were Silesian immigrants who came to this area in the 1840s and they worked in this area and in 1891 they purchased 40 hectares of land near Nuriukpa and set about planting vines. Two years later, by 1893, they planted the entire area with Shiraz, Grenache, Mataro and a variety they refer to as White Hermitage, possibly Marsan or Roussin. And this planting today provides some wonderful old vineyards. Now, the Kessler family continued to run their vineyards until 1986. I'm not aware of them actually producing wine under their own name. I assume that the fruit was sold to other wineries. A lot of it probably went into the fortified wines that would have been made a lot during the early to mid 20th century in, in the Barossa Valley. Anyway, the family sold up in 1986, but a few years later in 1999, I believe the vineyards were in dire financial straits and they came up for sale again. At which stage they were snapped up by a company that had been formed principally by two people. Somebody called Ed Peters, who is described as an agribusiness entrepreneur, and a partner of his, Reed Bod Bosworth, who was a winemaker. And with a few other investors, they formed a company and they purchased Keesler wines and set about making some wines from these fabulous old vineyards. And over the past nearly 25 years now, they've built quite a reputation with some well-marketed but nonetheless high-quality brands. For instance, Old Bastard Shiraz it is a wine that they make entirely from a plot of 1893 planted Shiraz. They have another label for a plot planted in 1899 called Alter Reben, the German for old vines. And another one of their popular brands is, is a wine called the Bogen, which is a sort of a larger-than-life heavyweight Barossa Red. I've seen a statistic that says that 70% of the vines they have for the production of red wine are over 40 years old. So they have some fabulous resources of old vines just to give wonderful concentrated fruit. The Stonehorse range was developed to offer wines at a more value for money end of the market. They're still high quality, they're still made from estate fruit. But for instance, instead of coming from the old estate vineyards in the Barossa, this comes from vineyards planted in the late 90s in the Clare Valley. So about an hour's drive north of Barossa. And here we're about two hours drive north of Adelaide. An equally warm region. Now here they talk about the soils being heavy brown soil. So I'm assuming brown clays. And evidently the reference to stone horse refers to the uh, Clydesdale horses that prior to the time when people had tractors, were needed to till this heavy earth to, to, to plough in the vineyards. When it comes to winemaking, the fruit's entirely hand-picked. Each plot is picked and kept separate right through fermentation to blending. Fermentation takes place with what they refer to as local yeasts. So I'm assuming these are locally selected yeasts that have been cultured rather than necessarily indigenous yeasts. So not yeasts that have come in with this harvest, maybe yeasts that have come into the winery on previous harvests have been selected, cultured. And those selected cultures are then being used to start fermentations. They say the juice had good skin contact and that was allowed to go on for 10 days during fermentation. I've seen different notes. One was saying that pump overs happened twice a day and the other was saying that racking happened twice a day. I think it would be very extractive if you were doing a rack and return twice a day for a long period of time. So I think pumping over twice a day with occasional rack, rack and returns sounds more likely to me. At the end of fermentation, the wine was pressed off the skins, it was left to rest for a day. It was then put into oak barrels to do its malolactic conversion. The oak that's being used is four-year-old French oak. Following malolactic conversion, the wine was racked off its leaves and returned to barrel, and the wine stayed aging in barrel for 15 months. So let's have a look at the wine. First thing you notice that this is deep, it's dark, it's not quite, but it's very nearly opaque. It's a sort of a black red with a purplish mauve rim. The wine has 14.5% alcohol.
and is clinging to the glass quite readily. There also seems to be a tiny touch of CO2 being distributed around the glass as I swirl that as well. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? The aromas are rich and there's a lovely dark purple fruit concentration, almost like sort of black plum, damson, bullis, and yet there are sort of more red fruit notes, red plum. Uh, there are notes of, of, of other black fruits, sort of blackberry, black cherry, a sort of a richness in the mid palate. And then uh, there's a sort of a, a slightly more savoury, leathery note as well. The aromas are attractive, they're quite intense, they're ripe and they're open. So let's taste. On the palate, the wine is rich, it's warming, it's alcoholic. There are those ripe fruit notes again. The concentrated black plum, the damson, the bullis. Going to an almost licorice core, you know, such as the concentration in the mid palate. There are savoury notes, that leatheriness is definitely there. And behind the leather, as the tannic structure becomes slightly drying, and that's where the sort of the licorice notes are, and there are some hints of cedar, that's where you're seeing some sort of peppery notes right across the mid palate. The alcohol is rich, as I was saying, 14.5% the label says. It's providing some warmth and roundness. But the warmth it's giving is giving generosity to the sort of the red plum notes and perhaps rich red cherry notes that are coming out from behind the black fruit core here. So there is this lovely fruit. There's a nice balanced freshness, which is allowing the fruit to show quite well and giving the wine reasonable length. It doesn't have incredible focus on the finish, but there is this warmth, this richness, and this attractive red fruit perfume. The tannins have a little grip, really they're more velvety than grainy. There is sort of a soft smoothness, and I suppose that has accompanying notes of vanilla and chocolate, just giving sort of lovely smoothness there. The wine is rich, generous, and has some pretty good warm climate, South Australian, Shiraz typicity. It's a full-bodied rich wine that I suspect would quite happily to continue to develop for at least four or five years. It offers power and despite being a relatively alcoholic wine has reasonable balance. Yes I think this is a nice example of a South Australian Shiraz that delivers decent quality and offers excellent value for money. So certainly I think if you if you enjoy big rich fruity Australian Shirazes this is a very typical example that you're likely to enjoy. So thank you so much for joining us. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do please press the like button. If you'd like to watch more of our videos, do please subscribe to our channel. It would be fantastic to have your support there. That way, of course, you can set yourself a notification and you can always be alerted when we release a new video. If you have any comments, please leave those in the comments box below. We'd be really interested to hear what you think about the wines we're looking at, the tastings we're doing, or anything else related to that. If you have any friends you think might like to watch the video, do please feel free to forward it to them. We would very much appreciate your endorsement there. I will leave a link in the notes below to the Wine Searcher webpage for this wine. And you can follow that up. You can see what the, the critics have scored the wine. You can see any notes we have. You can see any awards it's won. We have a section with a price history. Obviously, you can see pricing and availability of the wine, any background we've got on the winemaking. And hopefully, all the information you might need to make an informed purchasing decision for a wine. So thank you once again for joining us and I do hope you'll manage to find some time. Come and join us for another tasting in the very near future. Bye for now.